Hi everyone, I have a very cool proof of concept to show you as part of this video. I built a dynamic shopping cart with dynamic filtering in Glide Apps, which I want to showcase as part of this video and also give you a sneak peek of how I built this so that you can use these techniques. So the features that I'm going to cover as part of this video are from two perspectives, one from the perspective of or the point of view of users and the other from the point of view of staff. So just a quick uh, introduction about what the app is about. It's, a, it's an e-commerce app that allows people to purchase products. And I'm creating dynamic cards where customers can just place the orders. I have not included the functionality of uh, allowing users to pay through the app, just placing the orders. So that's the app idea. And these are the features that I'm going to cover as part of this video. One is dynamic filtering. Second is add to cart. Third is buy now. Fourth is checkout. And fifth is add delivery address at the time of placing the order and then eventually placing the order. From the point of view of staff, uh, we are going to cover how the staff members can view customer orders and then they can change the status of any particular order. So without wasting any more time, let's dive deep into one of each of these features one by one. So very quickly, we are now inside the app environment in Glide. Uh, this is not a live app. This is inside the Glide builder environment. So when a user logs in right now, there is user one. Let's view it as user two. Or in fact, let's do it as user one. User one already has an order in the past, but let's forget about that. Or in fact, let's do it from the point of view of user two. So the first feature that we are going to check out is how to enable dynamic filtering. So at the top, I have a choice component at the top, which allows people to filter this list of in items on the store by category. So if I select bedroom, it will only show me items that are under the category of bedroom. If I select living room, it will show me items from the living room. If I unselect everything, it shows me all the items, but grouped by the category. And the way I've done this dynamic filtering is this. So under home, I'm capturing a user specific column or a user specific value, which when I select a living room here, this is populated as living room here. I'm looking up this field in the inventory sheet where using a single value column, uh, and wherever it matches, wherever the item matches, the items category matches the selected category, the output is one. The reason why I've done this this way is, let's say if in the future, if you want to add more criteria for dynamic filtering, you can do this using the this zero, one, and two, and three uh, way. So this is a very quick demo of how to do dynamic filtering. But now let's check out the next item on our list, which is what happens when we do an add to cart. So if I click add to cart, what this will do is it will create an order for this particular customer and then add a line item for three feet bed frame as part of that order. How does this look in the backend? Let's see. So firstly, it creates an order which is created just now. Uh, it will set the order status to new. And for that order, it will then add this three feet bed frame as part of that order. So if I go back to orders and if I look at this relation between an order table and the order line items table, this is the relation. So let's quickly add a couple of more items. Uh, let's do this, let's do this, let's do this. I've added a total of four. When I do this, you must have noticed that earlier there was no proceed to checkout button, but now there is. So let's go to proceed to checkout. Here I can look at what my cart looks like currently. 
and now if i want i can remove some of these items when i remove the last item from the cart it will bring me back to the home screen where i can add items from scratch again so again since there are no items in my cart it does not show me the proceed to checkout button but as soon as i add it it will show me the proceed to checkout button so let's add another one so basically there are two orders in my cart right now the total is 260 now it will ask me for an address and as soon as i enter the address i can see the button for placing the order now i place the order and now i'm brought back to the home screen so this is how the add to cart button works now let's see how the buy now button works so the buy now button works regardless of whether i already have some items in my cart right so if i click so right now there is no cart uh, i don't see the proceed to checkout but because there is no order as soon as i click the buy now button what it will do is it will create an order it will create a line item for that particular order and then immediately take me to the checkout screen where i can again enter the address and say place order and now let's do a hybrid of the two let me add add to cart add to cart add to cart and the final one when if i click buy now it will add this item to the cart and take me to the checkout screen and again i'm here here again i can enter the delivery address and place this order so i think we have seen dynamic filtering add to cart buy now checkout add delivery address and place order very quickly and now let's see how a staff member can view the orders that a customer has placed so let's go back to the app change this to staff 1 the staff can view the home screen just like any customer because for whatever reasons if we don't want them to see the home screen we can change that as well but for now they are able to see all the customer orders that have been placed very quickly i just change the filter from paid to ordered so i see that there are three orders that have been freshly placed i as a sales person can quickly go here change the order status to paid packed whatever i can go back and see that there are now three categories i can change the order status of another one i can say shipped and now there are four buckets of orders here so that's the idea and let's quickly i i jump i rush through the features of features of this app let me try and see if i can cover how i have implemented each of these functionalities so for instance uh, when i click on add to cart let me show you how this add to cart button is configured so the add to cart button is a custom action where i check if the users if the user has an active cart or not first i'll cover how to check whether a user has an active cart or not in a few minutes but let's say i'm checking the user profiles active cart whether it exists or not if it is if it already exists i just add a line item to the line items table and show them the notification if the act, if, if there is no active cart what i do is i first create a new cart or in fact a new order and then add that line item under that order so this is that let me now show you how i am checking if a user has an active cart or not so whenever i am creating a new order uh, let me quickly go back here and show you how i create a new order so when i create a new order i add the order status as new and now under the users table to check if a user has an active or active cart or not what i'm doing is i'm creating a combination of the user's email and the order status of new so if a if an order with these two combinations exists it means that the user has an active cart if it doesn't in that case i'll create an active cart and then that becomes an i will create a new order and that becomes an active order or an active cart for that particular user this may sound a little confusing but um, 
it is pretty easy uh, so again uh, a quick overview again each order in the order table has a column to indicate who is the user that created that cart or order and the order status so i am creating a unique key of user and the order status and as long as this order status remains new it means that it is a it is an active cart so i am creating a key for email and the order status under the users table i am creating a relationship between the user's email id and the phrase dash new and if it results in a result it means that this particular user has an active cart so that's how it is and with by now the only change is that in the last step i am also adding a custom action of go to cart which is a separate my cart tab which i am not showing in this uh, top level menu in the cart in the app so if i were to show it i would simply select show in menu let me quickly change it to user 1 and it will start showing up at the top but i figured it does not look that good so that is why i am removing it by the way past uh, you existing users they can view at look, look at the orders that they have placed in the past so we as a, a, as user 3 we created three orders as part of this demonstration i am showing all three orders with their statuses in the app i can click on any of these orders check uh, when that order was placed what is that order status what is that order id uh, where the delivery address was what were the items that were ordered as part as part of that order the order summary and blah 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 we can add a lot more details but i'll skip that part so for example we have not included uh, taxes we have not included shipping fee but these all of this can be easily added the idea of this particular video is to show you uh, this functionality of how to create a dynamic cart and allow people to place orders on the app so i think i have covered let me quickly see the presentation and see if i have missed out on any functionality okay by the way uh i am viewing this app as view user 2 and i don't see a proceed to checkout button so i'll quickly cover how i have hidden the proceed to checkout button if there is no active cart so the proceed to checkout button only shows up when a user has an active cart and the way i have done that is using visibility conditions so it is shown only when for the user that for the user to there is no active cart right now if there were an active cart it would return the total number of items uh, that are added under that particular active order new order so as long as this is zero or remains blank it means that there is no active cart as soon as i add this this condition will change to one and we can immediately see this proceed to checkout button here so the way these results will show up here is for user 2 there is now one active cart which is this and for this particular active cart there are two look up two items under that particular order so very quickly i'll show you how to do this so we'll create a relationship between order the order table and the order line items uh, using the row id as order id and for that particular order i am counting the total number of items that have been added under that order and do, and i am doing a look up for this field under the users tab to see how many items have been added to an active cart for that particular user so if i go to cart and if i remove this item the cart the active order still exists for this person but there are no items for this person in the cart right so under the users tab it will still show that there is an active order but the number of total items in for this person is zero that is why we don't see a proceed to cart button here as soon as i add it it will add this item to that particular order and then it will show me the proceed to checkout button which is brings me up here again and yeah uh, one another feature that i implemented as part of this app is when uh, the item is the last item in a cart when we are trying to remove 
an item from the cart. I have configured a custom action here, which I'll quickly show you now. So under collections, under this custom uh, actions, I'm checking a condition which say, which looks at if the total number of items for that particular order is greater than one. If it is greater than one, I'm simply going to delete that item from the order team from the order line at items table. If it is the last item in the cart, what I'm going to do is I'm going to delete this row. I'm going to show the notification that that unit was removed from your cart. And then I'm going to go to the tab, which is the home tab. So I think I have covered everything that I had planned to cover as part of this demonstration. If you have any questions uh, about the implementation, uh, please don't hesitate to reach out. I'll include uh, the coordinates, my website, my email, my phone number and everything in the description of this video below. And I'm also planning to publish this app as a template in the Glide library. Uh, so it is going to be my first template in Glide after a really long time. I have in the past published more than 30 paid templates to Glide and I have not published a template in the longest time. So this is going to be my return to publishing more paid templates to Glide to the Glide library. I would love to know um, what you think of this and how this app or this template could be made better so that it could serve more users. And by the way, this app can be used for restaurants as well. Uh, so what I've done is for a couple of my clients, I've used the same concept uh, to implement this functionality for uh, a restaurant uh, for a, which offers a pickup service to its customers. So customers can create a cart, place the order, come to the restaurant in like 20 minutes and pick up their order. The, the restaurant and the kitchen can see which are the live orders that have been placed with the kitchen and then process those orders. So except for the payment functionality and the fulfillment functionality, uh, or in fact, the logistics functionality, uh, this app allows you to anybody to place on orders online in any setting, be it a restaurant, be it a, an e-commerce or anything, be it a rental business or anything. So there are multiple applications of this particular idea. Let me know what you think of this. If you have any feedback for me, please leave it in the comments below and I'll see you next time. Thank you so much.